right, we move on to question 10, and this is dealing with vectors and matrices. So this is what it says. It says the transformation m equals 0 p q 0 maps the point r onto r prime as shown in the diagram below. And if we look at the coordinate for r, this is 2, 5, and the coordinate for r prime is 5, 2. Now, there are certain things that we do know that happens when we carry out certain transformation. So we know normally when we see coordinates switching like this, it normally tends towards a rotation. Right? It can't be a reflection as we can see that there is no symmetry taking place here for it to be a reflection. It couldn't be a translating because the translating vector would be a 2 by 1 vector. And it's not an enlargement as we see the points here being switched. So we know it's more than likely a rotation. So let's move on to see what the question is actually asking us. So part one says determine the values of P and Q. Now what do we know? We know that when we multiply matrix M, which is 0, P, Q, 0, by R, and R is 2, 5, we end up with the coordinate 5, 2. So what really happens? What needs to happen for these to switch? Of course, if it was the identity matrix, which was 1, 0, 0, 1, if we had multiplied any point by that, it would have actually gotten back 2, 5. But notice what happens now. You have 0, P, Q, 0, which means that for these values to remain the same, but switch, P and Q would have to be 1. So we could manually work this out, or we can just look at the coordinate and see what happens and write down the value for P and Q. For them to switch, P would have to be 1 and Q would have to be 1. So basically, we can say that P is equal to 1 and Q is equal to 1 as well. Now, part two said so describe fully the transformation M. Now, when describing a rotation, and we agree that this is a rotation, there are certain things that we have to talk about. We have to talk about the direction of a rotation, we have to talk about the center of rotation, and we have to talk about the angle of rotation. So in this case, we all agree that the center is 0, 0. As you can see, it was connected to the center of rotation for us. So it is a rotation, and we are going from R to R prime, and this is anticlockwise. So we can say it's a rotation anticlockwise, and from here to here, to this, from the third, we we'll call this a fourth quadrant, back to the first quadrant, that would have been a 90 degree rotation. So here's what we say. It's a 90 degree anti-clockwise rotation with center 0, 0. Or we can say with the center being the origin. 0, 0 is really the coordinate of the origin. So it's a 90 degree anti-clockwise rotation about the origin. Or we say with center 0, 0. Depends. Either one works. All right, we now move on to question B that says that PQRS is a parallelogram in which PQ is equal to U and PS is equal to V. And if you look at the diagram, you can see this is PQ, which is U, and this is PS, which is equal to V. Now, before we even read the rest of the question, there are certain things that we can put on the diagram. We know that for a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal and parallel. So it means that if PQ is equal to U, then SR is also equal to U. And the arrows would go in the same direction as you know they are parallel. Also, if PS is V, then QR must also be V. So we can put that on. It says M is a point on QS such that QM, and you can see it here, QM to MS is 1 to 2. So for this one part, which is at QM, MS is two parts. So in all, we can say we can, if we divide this thing into three equal parts, one part would be QM and MS would be two parts. That's what it really means. It says write in terms of U and V, an expression for QS. So let's go. We can say that QS is equal to, and then there are two ways to get from Q to S. We can go from Q to R and then from R to S. Or we can go from Q to P and then from P to S. So we could say QP plus PS. Now notice something important here. If we go from Q to P, we are going the opposite direction of the vector, which means that it's going to be a negative 
whenever you go the opposite direction of a vector, it's always negative. So you're going to have a negative u plus ps is equal to v. And we're going the same direction of the vector. So it's going to be positive v. And that's how we get qs. Part b of 1, well, part b of b1 says that we should find qm. So this is qm. Now go back to the question. We were told that qm to ms is 1 to 2. All right? And this is on qs. So what do I do? If this is one part, this is two parts. So in other words, qm is actually one of three parts. So it's really one third of qs. So we can say that qm is equal to one third qs. So it's going to be one third. And bear in mind that qs was minus u plus v. And if we multiply that by one third, let me move over to the right here. It would be negative one third u plus one third v. All right. Or we can keep it as it is in the bracket. Now, part two of the question says that show that mr is equal to one third of all of u plus two v. So what I'm going to do is simply to put on a line there that shows mr. So m to r would be this line here. Let me just put on the arrow there. So if I'm going from m to r, I could go from m to q, and I can go from q to r. Now, note the fact that we know that qm, because we found it before, is equal to negative one-third u plus one-third v. All right, so let me just start by writing the formula here that mr is equal to mq plus qr. Now, how do I get mq? Since I know qm, I know that mq is going in the opposite direction. So it's going to be negative of all of this. So where I have negative one-third u plus one-third v, I'm going to change everything to a negative. So I'm going to end up with one-third u. Well, this would be a minus. Minus one-third v plus qr. And qr is equal to v. Now, this would be one-third u and if i add negative a third v plus one v i'm gonna get positive two third v all right and this is what we can do notice the one third we can factor out a one third so i'm gonna have one third we're gonna have u plus two v when we factor it out those that is exactly what they wanted so it's a qed that which has been proven and finally, part 3 says that T is the midpoint of PQ. So here is PQ. So let me put T in there. So around the midpoint would be about there. So T is the midpoint of PQ. Prove that R, M, and T are collinear. What collinear means is that they are on the same straight line. So if R, M, and T are collinear, what it means is that this line from M to R, if I were to extend it, then it will actually go right to where T is, right? That should actually be a straight line. So it will look more like this. So you will have T, M, and R on the same straight line if they are collinear, all right? So what do I do? If this is really true, then what we can say is that T, R, T, R is equal to T, M, plus mr if this is really true that they are collinear just remember that collinear means that they're on the same straight line as you see me drawing this line here so you'd have t m and r on this line now let us take this piece by piece starting with t r so if i'm going from t to r as you can see t is the midpoint of pq so whatever pq is TQ would be half of it. So we could say this is equal to TQ plus QR. And since we can say that PQ is equal to U and T is the midpoint, then TQ must be half. And of course, it's going in the same direction, so it's positive. So this would be equal to a half U plus QR, which is just equal to V. So what it means is that when I add these two, which is TM and MR, this is the answer that I should get. 
all right so let's take tm and mr piece by piece as well now tm let's look on the diagram this is t this is m i can go from t to q and from q to m so this is equal to tq plus qm and since we had used tq already which is half u this will just be a half u plus and bear in mind that we already found what qm was qm from the previous question was negative a third u plus a third v so this would be negative a third u plus a third v right and normally you know that when we have plus minus we just subtract so it's really a half u minus a third u plus a third v that breaks down to one six so a half minus a third would give me one six so i would have one six u plus one third v so we actually finish with tm so this is tm oh we have mr already mr from the previous question was a third u plus two third v so mr is equal to a third u plus two third v so we have everything we need well all we need to do now is simply to add tm and mr so let us consider tm plus mr now tm as we found it is 16u so 16u plus a third v and mr is equal to one third u plus two third v so we're looking for the like terms the like terms here would be one six u one third u so we have one six u plus one third u plus one third v plus two third v now what is one six plus one third and you know you can use a calculator for that so one six plus one third would give me a half u and one third plus two third would just give me one v which we can just write as v so we would have proven that tr which is a half u plus v is actually equal to tm plus mr as you can see right here so we can just write a final statement that since tr is equal to tm plus mr then t m and r are collinear or they are on the same straight line so you just have a statement there